Yo, authors, publishers, and the 100 Covers design team. Hey, this is a really simple lesson, but it is such an important lesson, one of the most important lessons in all of book cover design. You know, it's what should your book cover look like, you know? It, it depends on the genre that you're writing in, and what determines what it should look like are the current best-selling covers in the Kindle market specifically, if you're a self-published author. Right, Self-published authors are going to be a lot more competitive with Kindle than they can be trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with big publishing companies that are trying really hard to sell physical books, right? print books. So we really look to the Kindle rankings, the best sellers, and what's performing well in Kindle if you're a self-published author trying to figure out what your cover should look like. Okay, Now each genre has its own signature look, and that look is always changing. Okay, so you want to look hip, you want to look current, you don't want to be basing your design off of books from 20 years ago, it's going to look outdated no matter how successful that book was. Okay, and here's a couple of tips, and this is an important lesson for, you know, my design team as well, because 9 out of 10 authors are not going to get this lesson, they're not going to see this video, they're not going to have this understanding of what a book cover should be. They're thinking about their book, and they're not thinking about their genre, and they're not thinking about readers. And you should be thinking about your genre, you should be thinking about your readers, you should be looking to what currently is selling and making a scientific decision about what your book cover should look like, based on success, based on proven winning designs. That's what your book cover should be. Yes, it should represent your book, but that is honestly a secondary consideration to designing for the genre and for the readers, okay? Look like what they want to read. Look what they will like to read, okay? So there's kind of a way that anybody can go check out, um, which is looking through the bestsellers, and, and I'll, tell you, I'll tell you how I go through and give you some pointers on how to determine what's truly a best-selling book from one that's just temporarily on the charts, okay? But... An incredible tool that if you're a serious writer and you want to make it as a career, if you just have one book, you know, this is probably a too big an investment, but this this K-Lytics, okay, Alex Newton's K-Lytics is mind-blowingly powerful for determining what your book cover should look like. So what K-Lytics does is they do all these reports, okay, on all these different genres, okay? This is just... They do reports on something like 2,400 subgenres, okay? These deep, deep dives into all the analytics from all the sales data from Amazon. I mean, truly remarkable stuff that they do. And if you're going to be a serious author, I mean, this is the one. If you could only get one tool, I would have it be this, okay? Because you're going to understand what to write and what that needs to be like and what it, you need to know what your cover looks like, too. So... Looking at female detectives and sleuths, you can see 33% of all the dollars made have a silhouette of a back. Okay, is that not amazing? 22% of all the dollars, uh, the total sales volume, right, the total royalties, um, have a house cabin or some kind of building on there. Okay, we can scroll in, you can see a little cabin, house. Uh, kind of a castle looking type thing there, but mostly cabins. Some look a little more beachy, some look a little bit more alpine, but a lot of them have houses, okay? And then you have uh, sort of a nature city type theme here. So we scroll in, uh, you see kind of a landscape kind of look, okay? And we could go into even deeper detail, right? What's a color you see here often? You know, I see red and yellow. I see a lot of red and yellow. If we look at the type of fonts that are used, we can see repeating themes with the type of fonts that are used for sure. Okay? All, all caps, right? You see that? All capitals, lots of yellow, um, and usually all the same color. Right? I had a designer submit one the other day where part of the title was one color and the last word of the title was a different color. And I 
I threw fit over that. No, not really. But I pointed it out and said, hey, you know, look at look at these covers and tell me where you're seeing that. And there was one that was done that way. So he got a pass. But um, yeah, you can just see tremendous amount of repeating colors, fonts, and images. A book cover is just comprised of colors, fonts, and images. That's all it is. And you're looking for repeating themes there. And this genre, as all genres do, has a very, you know, it has a theme. What makes a detective and sleuth, female detective and sleuth book look like one? It's these elements, these elements. So it's really important to look at the best-selling books, look, at, look for repeating patterns and figure out how you can give your book the same look and feel not to stand out or be different from these, but to look like these, right? You don't want to be different from what's working. <laughs> you want to be the same, which is a crazy concept because that's just not, you know, an author isn't going to naturally, instinctually want to be the same. You know, authors want to be different. They want to be unique. And um, unique is risky. You know, why do it differently when... You know, why why not mimic those that are successful and try to blend in? Make why not try to look like you belong here? So that's really what it's about, looking like you belong. So uh, if you do this kind of research, if you have Klytics, you can go and look and really start to get a quick feel for what books in your genre should look like. Of course, as an author, you the more clear your genre is. And the more you can pin that down in that subgenre, and the more you can know who you are, what you write, and what your book is, and understand it, the better you are going to be able to find, you know, the right examples to be working from. Now, if you don't have Klytics, you can't afford it, you don't want it, too complicated for you, whatever, you just don't have time, and you're looking to do the best you can in 10 or 15 minutes, okay, I understand that. <laughs> I take a lot of shortcuts in life myself. So if we go look at mystery, thriller, and suspense, we're going to just stick to the same genre here just because it's easy to do. Um, mystery, amateur sleuth, women sleuths. Let's check that out. So this is the current bestseller list here. Now, there are several books in this top 100 that aren't the right kind of book. Okay. Okay. We're really wanting to be, you know, this category. Okay. Hypothetically speaking, just to, uh, you know, for argument's sake here. Okay. To make an example. So some of these books don't belong in this category. Okay. Some of these books are not runaway bestsellers. They're just charting because they have a low price. So most know this, but the way Amazon's ranking system works, the ranking is based on the number of copies sold, no matter what the price is. So yes, a book that's 99 cents is going to sell a lot more copies than one that's at 4.99 if, you know, presented to the same number of buyers. Okay? So what it does, Amazon's system, their bestseller rankings list artificially inflates cheap books, okay? So as you're looking through here, first of all, this book doesn't really belong. It's more of a cozy. And so, not more of a cozy. It's it's like 110% cozy. It's got donuts and everything. Um, you know, this doesn't really belong in here. And because it's 99 cents and it only has 94 reviews, you kind of have to assume it doesn't belong here, okay? Now, Seeing a lot of reviews, that's really exciting. The book obviously sold a bajillion copies, and you think, okay, wow, this is a really successful book. I should base my design on this book. Before you do that, you know, go through and identify some looks that you like. Go and identify uh, things that seem like they'd be a good fit for your book. Find stuff that has, you know, a decent amount of reviews. I'd say over a thousand is is good. Uh, that's not always the best because there could be a brand new hot new release that only has a couple hundred reviews and it it might be selling really great and it might go on to be a huge seller so you don't really know that yet but you're going to look at a lot of reviews when you see this many reviews what does that tell you 
it tells you this book has been out for a while. Now, this was like a really iconic design that really defined the genre for a while. I mean, there was so many thrillers with friggin' trees on it uh, that, w that w had a blue filter on it. I mean, it was crazy, right? I made videos about that not even that long ago. But this book came out November 1st of 2014, baby. This is, that's seven years ago. That's, you know, a long time in book cover years, okay? So you want to try to find something that's doing really well that hasn't been out as long, that's a little bit newer, right? If I look at this Melinda Lee here, this is her book three. March 16th, 2021, now we're talking. And this, this is more the iconic look, right? We got the back, we got nature, we got all caps, we got yellow. I mean, this is it, baby, this is, this is it. So we're really sort of honing in on the iconic look of the genre right now, and that's it. So you want to not just look, you know, this book obviously was hugely successful, but it's, it's dated. You know, this is an older cover. It came out a longer time ago, right? So look at when they were published in addition to the number of reviews and the price. Go through the top 100 and just keep narrowing it down, narrowing it down. And ideally, as an author, we love to have two really good ones to work from. There's another cozy. Uh, two really good covers to work from as examples that makes an, uh, a designer's job so much easier. And if you do that, it doesn't matter who you use as a designer. Your designer is going to do a much better job, even if they suck. Not one of our designers, but I mean somebody off of Fiverr even, or wherever you're going uh, to get your book cover done. If you can guide them and you tell them, I want it to look like this, and the this that you want it to look like is well-researched, and it is a hot seller in your category, you know, you're going to get a better look. And you have something better to reference when you're giving feedback, right? If you ask for a cover that looks like this, and they come back and the font looks like this, you can say, eh, you know, I don't think the big white font looks quite right. I think, I think I'd rather see something in red, you know? Um, or maybe they send something that doesn't have any color, and you're like, well, I really think it needs some color to give it that glowing look that gives it kind of that glowing luminescence that's so iconic in the genre, right? So anyway, that's, uh, that's just it. That's how you go about finding a few really good examples that you want to base your design on. And not all genres are as clear as this, right? The repeating patterns here are, are more obvious. You might go to another category, maybe in nonfiction, uh, such as memoir, and memoir, if you look through, maybe it doesn't have so many repeating themes. You know, the canvas is a lot more open for how to do a memoir cover, and you have more leeway, you have more freedom. It also makes it harder to make a book cover that screams memoir when memoir doesn't have such a well-defined look. Anyway, I hope all this is making sense, but this is how we operate and to me, this is the great secret. I mean, this is the great secret of getting a, book, a great book cover that's going to perform well in the market, right? If it looks the part, man, it's going to get a great, great click-through rate whenever you do any kind of paid advertising for it. Uh, readers that, you know, loved this book, and there's a lot of them that loved it, at, at least 4,900, and probably... 100 for everyone who actually wrote a review. If they see a book cover that looks kind of like this, it's going to draw their attention because they love this book and they want more. They want another book like that. And if your book looks like that, they assume it's going to be kind of like that. They're going to instantly be interested. And it's very subconscious because they probably only looked at this book cover for two seconds, right? Then they read the book and they never looked at the book cover again, especially Kindle readers right? But that's still embedded in their subconscious, and they're going to see something, and it's just going to, for some reason, kind of, the, do the dots and the wires are going to connect in their brain, and they're going to know that your book is, is kind of like this book, and they're going to know to be interested. Give it a click, and that's where you have a real shot to sell a book. You know, if your reviews are good, your book description is good, 
everything else is tight, you're going to sell a book. You're going to get a download, and they're going to check it out. So, And your cover will have fulfilled its purpose. Anyway, that's my lesson for this week. And uh, really, honestly, this is the most important lesson. It's figuring out what your book cover should look like if you want it to sell. Okay? And think a lot less about your book and get your eyes all opened up and go look through these bestseller categories and go over to Klytics and get the ultimate cheat sheet into looking for those repeating themes and patterns amongst the bestsellers. All right, peace, I'm out.